Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Ah, welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. We got uh, we get a, we get a real live Chiro on the show. We do. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we call you. We call people Chiros on this show. We don't go full hero. But we say churro. Churro is like a combination of a hero and a churro. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a Spanish. I love flavor. churros. Yeah, who doesn't like fried bread with with sugar and cinnamon on? Yeah, that way you're not. I have a churro maker in my kitchen. Do you really? Like, yeah, that's are, a big I'm flex. Right are you there. are you a Latino gentleman? Or are you just trying to support? Uh, you know, becoming a fat bastard like we are. I eat, I eat Chick Fil A. I fully support becoming an armed fat bastard. Yeah, armed yes. fat bastard. That's not that. You should change your fucking social handles to that armed fat bastard yeah you should um and unarmed fat bastard uh you were uh, disarming getting a lot of press uh over the last week for uh disarming um t- dan go into that video um t- we'll actually we'll share it right here mark it um mark the time code Giorgio. um we'll share this video and then uh we'd love for you to describe what happened here during the protest last week. Yeah, give it a sec, though. It could spread to some other nearby vehicles. Also a concern about that uh, building that is nearby. Uh, and it appears as if there's some folks that are trying to... All right, it, it looks like there's some type of weapon there. We're going to break away from that shot there. Not sure who that person is, but obviously a very uh, scary and fluid situation. All right, so we just saw this video of you snatching a gun out of somebody's hand. Explain to us what happened here. Uh, well, do you want from the very beginning or just that video? Yeah, yeah start the very from beginning. where your parents first fell in love. And, where you were conceived. Yeah, where you were conceived and what the delivery was like, the whole thing. So there was a dumpster behind a bar and... Uh... Carabas, yep. <laughs> no, I think it was, Win- it was Wendy's and a strip mall. So it wasn't even a Wendy's with a standalone Ooh. building. Somebody bought it. A- pre-Baconator <laughs> era. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then how old were you when you first read Anne Frank, the diary? Oh man, I read that in school, and I just made some very lewd comments about that the other day. Oh, we, <laughs> we're big Frank, we're big Frank fans over here. Yeah. So. Uh, when did you read that? Like seventh grade or some shit? Yeah, I don't yeah, remember. Yeah. Uh, sixth grade changed my life. Uh, well, yeah, it's, it uh, made it so. made me start worrying about my privacy. Did it? Yeah. If, if somebody can actually get murdered in the Holocaust, yeah. and still have their privacy violated by Westerners after that, I feel like, well, I'm I'm, I'm done. <laughs> and now we found out that Google has actually been logging all of your fucking uh, incognito stuff. They've got everything, dude. Yeah, they they own. Yeah, us. They They're getting sued everything. right now. For they this own us, dude. Anyways, yeah. Tell us for real, like just from, I, I guess start start from why you decided to go out there in the first place. I need to pay rent. <laughs> oh, so you were you were working. I was working. Okay. Yeah, I was oh, there no on shit. a uh, legitimate job. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can we ask what, what, what you were doing? Because I, I know you don't want to be identified, and I know you're not identified in this article. Um, Coffee or Die did a really great piece on you uh, last yeah, week. Yeah, they did. He uh, he definitely did an awesome piece, and I read it too. And I read it out loud to my brother while he was driving. Well, we were driving home because we went out again, and he ran security. Two of my brothers did. They ran security on me while i was running security on my guys because they were worried about the notoriety so mm. they took off early from work and that was pretty awesome ended up just be three of us hanging out in a crowd of ridiculousness yeah but, uh, that job yeah i was uh yeah i headed out there got a call hey we need some security for a news crew so i headed out there had about a little bit over an hour to drive so i had uh, some time to get my mind right for the gig and uh that specific situation um I had stepped out around the corner to look for police and hoping they were coming down because I had already had a rifle confiscated. I snatched it out of the first guy's hand who was firing rounds. And, uh, you know, I did see police. They were three and a half, four blocks away. They could not get to where we were, which was in the middle, the heart of it all. And then I looked mm-hmm. left because I, I know there's police cruisers. I already took a rifle from that area, and I know there's a second one. And I watched them pull the rifle bag out, watched them pull the rifle, and that's when you see me in the video coming after them. So. That's crazy. Uh, how many people were out in the streets of Seattle during that, would you say? Thousands. Really? Yeah, it was uh, It was nothing like I'd <laughs> ever seen. Like, I've been in, the last protest I had been in was actually in uh, Italy, in Rome, this last uh, September, and it was a uh, global warming protest, and it was way bigger. I mean, it was thousands. People from all over Europe came, but that was peaceful. Yeah. They didn't want to tear up their country, so... Are you from the Seattle area? 
No, not the area. I'm from Washington State. I grew up south of here. Gotcha. Because uh, Seattle in particular, we always hear about these crazy protests and how crazy that I've, city's become. I've got a fucking theory on this, and I want to run it by you two, and I want, I want to run it by the audience. Please, because well. I, I cannot figure out that fucking city. Everybody <clears throat> has something crazy to say about Seattle. I think that this isn't just about Seattle. It's Oregon, and it's Antifa at, at large, and it's... Uh, like young white liberal people, I think that they have oppression FOMO. You know what I mean? Oh, I, th- I'm, I don't know I'm what not, that is. Uh, FOMO is fear of missing out. Like it's a oh, they, okay. they they don't they feel like they've been excluded from the clout or whatever you want to call it from from being oppressed. Sure. So here's what they did. Maybe <clears throat> what ten or fifteen years ago, the people that we refer to as millennials and and why we have these feelings about the millennial attitude in general is because they've never really gone through anything that we consider tough, mm-hmm. right? So they, in, they invented all these problems for themselves, right? And then everybody was like, mm, no, shut the fuck up. You're weak. Get the fuck out of here. So yeah. to combat that, <clears throat> they have co-opted the oppression of other people, right, to become their cause. And look, I, standing up for the oppressed, that is what the special forces motto in this country isn't, hey, get fucked, you don't look like me. It's liberate the oppressed or liberator of the oppressed, the oppressed yeah. lever. So uh, that, that's, that's good. That's a good thing to believe. But taking that on yourself like that is very, very bizarre to me. It's like, imagine how insulting it is to be a black person marching in the streets for equal rights and have some blubbering white liberal girl come up crying and hugging you and apologizing and, and unloading the, the burden of how she feels about your plight onto you while you're trying. <laughs> I mean, that is the most insulting shit I've ever heard of in my fucking life. Yeah. It's nonsense. Totally the, only, the only thing that I can pin it on is these people have fear of missing out. They don't, like, everybody's depressed but me, man. It's not fair. This it's is, not fair that you're actually, not oppressed. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> this is actually a great theory. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> and you, I, like, I, I, now that you're saying it out loud, I kind of understand it where it's like, uh, I mean, not that you would fucking go and do this shit, but the, the fear of missing out on anything in life where you always think that, oh, this generation had a better time than we did, you know? Like, I always look back and be like, man, I bet the 70s were fucking awesome, right? They probably weren't. Um, I was, I, I, well, I you was, could get away with a lot of stuff, and ecstasy was legal. So yeah, but I mean, for, like all in all, because I was my wife's mom is in town, and she's a child of the '60s, and she was protesting for you know Vietnam and all that other shit, right? And so I was talking to her about it, and I was like, "Is it any different than it was in the '60s and today?" And she goes, "No, it's just different causes." And she goes, "It's just as much, except for today." With the social media, with Twitter and everything, it is in your fucking face all day long. Versus back then, if you wanted to see protests or riots, you physically had to turn on the news, and there was you had three channels to watch it mm-hmm. uh, or read about it in a in a hard newspaper <laughs> that some kid was throwing in your lawn for a nickel a day, and and it made more sense. She was like, "Your anger grows, um, you know." wilder and wilder because you're it's just constantly in your face all day you can't turn on your phone you can't turn on your television you can't open up your computer all of this rage is just jammed inside your face all day where she was like back then you physically had to go out to the rallies to get raged you know just to to get enraged about uh certain causes and things but uh now you can just sit behind your fucking keyboard and then go out and try to fuck shit up yeah i mean it's i i don't mind uh half of that scenario which is where more people are getting directly involved in in this stuff because i think Mm -hmm. that's important i've i've gotten a lot of good responses from the stuff we've been seeing and i've gotten a lot of weird responses the weird ones are people asking me why i'm more critical of like white conservative people and cops and things like that than i am of black protesters and the dumb shit that they believe like the 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 monolith that all cops are bad or Oh, that's easy. Yeah. I mean, that's it's easy to figure that out. It's because they set a higher standard already, so you're going to expect them to sit to that higher standard. Whereas well, everyone else, they've lowered their sons to a, such a lower standard, you can't really expect more of them. Especially the police. Like, I expect more out of police than I do yeah. and, and, and people who support them. And the other part of it is it's not my job to tell black people what to do about their struggle. You know what I mean? Like, look, it's up to black leaders to call people out for – it's up to people like John Jones – for yeah. example, who's doing that? Yeah. And uh, uh, there's uh, thousands of these people that are doing this shit. 
to call out that community for doing the stupid shit they're doing. It's my job as somebody who, one, speaks primarily to a uh, military first responder audience that leans conservative and as somebody who is a former military member myself and has worked for the government and all this stuff, it's my job to explain what I understand about this situation to people who think more like I do, right? Because there's a lot of nuance here. It doesn't, if, if we all, like, imagine a bunch of cops hold a town hall and just have an instructional period for black people to tell them what they should be doing, right. and then they don't listen to anything, and then they just leave. How, how do you think that's going to work out? <laughs> it's going to work out the same way that, uh, that a black person yelling at some rural white person that's poor about their plight. You're not going to hear that shit. You know what I mean? Right. It's up to people in your own community to fucking take charge and find the balance here. Right. It's not, it's not, we're, it's never going to happen if we're lining up on opposite sides and yelling at each other. Yeah, it no, I, I, I completely agree. What was it like on the ground that day? Was, was there any, Seattle? yeah, was it, was there any fear that you could get <laughs> overrun? Because uh, by all accounts, the police seemed like they were outnumbered in all of these cities. Um, was it like that in Seattle? Absolutely. It was. The, the police are outnumbered every single time one of these things happens. So what do you do when you're outnumbered? You have to at least show more force. And when something happens, you have to use that force. And that force is riot control devices like CS gas and riot armor and protection and riot shields, stuff like that. And they, uh, they're doing what they can. I mean, these guys don't want to be out here either. They just they want everything to be a normal day, nice and safe. So right. they are in a situation where they gotta they chose to choose a job, you know, that's to protect and serve, and that's what they're out there trying to do. The only unfortunate thing is it's against our own people, you know, Americans, regardless of left wing, right wing, we're all part of the American bird. So it's just sad. But yeah, it uh everything going on then that day, that Saturday, it wasn't the last day I was out there, was absolutely insane. And it was a riot. There were rioters and protesters, but it was definitely more violence and uh, you know, looting and all that kind of stuff happened. The the other day I was out there, <clears throat> that was a protest and that was actually awesome. Regardless of what I think for or against or anything they were protesting and they the protesters this is the most awesome thing i saw they were pulling people out of the protest that were trying to escalate they were taking those that were trying to you know attack the cops get through the line or whatever and they were pulling them out and they got a few swings in and they got them out of there and i'm sitting there doing my job and i'm like that's that's fucking awesome right there like that was great they're they're policing their own so maybe now they can get you know, some semblance of what our law enforcement and, uh, you know, first responder communities are trying to do with everything right. and how hard their job is. Cause it took four to five guys to get one guy away. So hopefully they take that as an example of, okay, what are these cops actually dealing with and why can't we just sit down at the table and figure this out? Right. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of back and forth over how to handle this stuff. I mean, I've, I've worked in, yeah. in private security as well before. And one of the things you learn, particularly about if you're working on union sites, we actually had a blank. I worked in California. We had a blanket rule. If we were doing anything union related, we didn't show up with any kind of aggressive looking gear just because of the history yeah. of that conflict. Uh, and I understand that when you're outnumbered fucking 50 to one as a police officer right now, that, is a problematic thing, particularly in Seattle where Antifa is all over the place and various other agitating retards are running around doing stupid shit all the time. You have, Ultimately, you have to protect yourself. Um, but I, I feel like uh, we're, we're missing the mark on a lot of this stuff. Like even last night or yesterday, some fucking dum-dum on the Buffalo Police Department pushed like a 78-year-old dude over on cracked his fucking head open or some shit. Like what are you doing, man? All, the entire world is watching you right now. At least presence art. of mind. Yeah, like yeah. the entire country at least is watching you. So how could you think that's okay? And then, to me, to me, that's just a uh, the absence of leadership. You know what I mean? Like some police sergeant that's on the ground out there. I don't give a fuck how much sleep you've had or if you're stressed out or anything. If you can't do the job, don't take the fucking job, man. Like if you're an infantry yeah. guy too. You're in Marine Corps infantry, right? You were in O three eleven or O three something. O three eleven. O three eleven. So. When we go out, of, when we go out to fight, and one of your soldiers or, or one of your colleagues starts doing stupid shit, you yoke their ass up because you hey, hem them up. Yeah, you're you fucking us up. up, dude. And it's and it's uh, back to the point that I was making before about uh, about chastising your own people. I took offense when another NCO came over to address one of my people, but not because mm -hmm. 
I don't think they should be doing that is because I know I, I – in the moment I'm their I, leader that's a that's a that's yeah. something I need to be doing yeah. and if I didn't see that that's a correction on me yeah. and I will correct my people but it's hard that's it's, what those protesters were doing they were correcting right. their people and yeah. pulling them out but it, it's hard that to admit awesome. that to yourself in the moment like you you feel yeah. shame and embarrassment and anger in that moment you're like fuck and you get mad at the other NCO but really your anger is directed toward yourself and I mm-hmm. feel like a lot of people yeah. we, we've talked about this throughout the week I feel like a lot of people right now are kind of uh, like if you in the last two weeks, if you haven't heard someone say something and be like, you know what, I never thought of it that way, then you're failing yourself and you're failing your community by not. I got a message from a uh, another podcaster. Actually, he was the first podcaster years ago that I ever listened to, and he explained my situation in a way is like, and our first message I sent back was, holy shit, yeah, you're right. I didn't look at it that way. I didn't consider it that way. And well, do you, you know, care? Do you to- care to share what he what the communication was? Because I think people need to hear this stuff. Um, you know, you're gonna have to give me a second to yeah, find it. Yeah, take your time. Because I just think, uh, again, it's it's up to everybody to kind of police your own folks. Yeah. Um, All right. Uh, oh shit! Yeah. It's on another account. Hold are you? Uh, are, my... you are you on a mission right now? I'm sitting at home, brother. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, because all right, so I mean, it's a balance there. My guys are pretty stretched thin, but uh, now with this. It's and my bosses completely understand. I'm mm-hmm. trying to media manage and build a platform to launch mm-hmm. a business and get into the industry and do good things for my family and myself and, uh, you know, accomplish my dreams. Um, but I'm still going out there and trying to take these jobs. It's just it's a little hard when uh, man, I cannot tell you what it's been like for me. I'm sure. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure. <clears throat> yeah, because yeah, we do these interviews all the time and, you know, stories go viral and then everybody wants a piece of you yeah um everybody wants to sit down and chat with you we're glad you spend you know some time with us today and uh well i appreciate it i mean honestly i've explained it before i'm one of those guys like if i have a notification on my phone i need to clear it i cannot clear (laughs) i cannot clear all this and i'm getting back to everybody i'm shooting these messages out and i i honestly the comments are the most entertaining thing but i'm in the in the messages because i feel like that's someone who took a little more time but uh i mean i'm that's what i'm doing yeah it's uh it's crazy brother and uh i mean hopefully i can build it into a positive thing and i'm trying to listen to the right people and follow Mm. my intuition on it yeah for sure by the way to to circle back on the seattle thing um the population of seattle city is about uh seven hundred thousand um and there are 1400 or so sworn officers there oh good luck yeah yeah that ratio is insane all right so this uh the message i got was um it's about 480 to one (laughs) by the way That's that is ridiculous. All right. He said, we talk occasionally about the idea of understanding your mission. Some people were critical, were critical of why you did that and didn't get your principal out because they didn't understand that keeping your principal safe and inside the danger area was the mission. What you did was keeping with that mission. I think that's a good example for numerous concepts and ideas. And, uh, at the time, like I recognized my news crew, they have a job to do. They have a job to be in the middle and in the middle of, all of it and taking the video and shooting the shot and getting mm-hmm. the truth, hopefully getting the truth. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I got when it all started kicking off, I got them to safety and that was my first job. And in my mind, it's okay. I need to balance my job with my duty. And I just had a thought that come to mind. I was picking up trash outside cause a raccoon got into it. And it's a little bit of clarity happened. It was, you know, that cliche, the cliche thing of, you know, I was just doing my job, just doing my job. And now I'm guilty of saying it, but there's more to it. And I think that, uh, you know, what I had to write down is at that point, I wasn't doing my job. I was doing my duty. My job was to keep the crew safe and that was taken care of. And I got them to safety and then it was okay. Well, my job dictates. I stay with them. Mm-hmm. I could have stayed with them and that could have been my excuse but is that a good enough excuse for me? No. Was it a good enough excuse for the guys in Benghazi? And who is, a, you know, that situation itself did flash through my mind. Well, fuck it. Job doesn't matter. What do we need to do? So that's ultimately what I made the decision to do. And that comes down to duty. And I don't think that's something you can fully train into. No, I don't. I, I agree with that. Uh, and Ross made this point earlier in the week about uh, a lot of people are saying that we need more police training and all this other stuff. And maybe to some yeah. degree they're right. But I don't think that's the solution. I think that uh, I don't think you can train someone 
over the course of six to 18 months or whatever it is with physical tactics and, and textbook shit on how to be a good person that understands the concept of duty beyond the job. My job is to protect and serve. What does that really mean? You know what I mean? It first, yeah. first of all, it means protect and serve every single fucking American, even people that are doing the wrong thing. It means making sure that I fucking grab them uh, in a way that presents the least amount of danger to them while still protecting myself and particularly yeah. innocent people around you. And uh, people lose sight of that very frequently. And it's it, the institution of policing is so important. We see what's happened with the media and with the government. People don't trust them, and rightly so. No, you should not trust the government. You should not trust the media. And we can't, it, it's happened with the police. And, and we see it from our perspective. Like, I personally trust police, but that's because, you know. I haven't had to deal with any of this bullshit that black people have had to deal with. Look, man, it's been going on for a long time. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was on ESPN this morning talking about his very first protest. It was in 1964. It was about an unarmed kid getting killed in fucking Brooklyn, mm -hmm. right? Um, this has been going on for a long time, and it may not seem... Like, it seems like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine a year, something like that. Well, that's not that many people. But to a community that... I understand that people are deeply offended... When someone kneels for the anthem, I got it. And I am too. I don't like that. I don't either. Yeah. Um, but Time and place. Exactly. I, I agree with you completely. But you, have to, you also have to allow yourself to understand. And I'm not excusing that behavior. I think it's poor behavior. And I think that some leadership isn't required to make that not a thing. But uh, you have to understand that black people have a different relationship with the idea of patriotism and that flag than you do. You know what I mean? You have to understand their perspective. I'm not saying that it's right that they do it. What I'm saying is that if, if I believe, I truly believe if, if there's, there's always going to be some assholes that do stupid shit. Like I personally think Kaepernick is a fucking self-aggrandizing asshole. Yeah. But I think a lot of people who joined in with what he was doing were trying to do it for the right reasons. And they, they really tried to go out of their way to explain they weren't doing it to disrespect America or the troops or anything. Although from their perspective, they failed to understand how deeply offensive that was. But we failed to understand that they have a very different relationship with the concept of patriotism in America than we did, mm -hmm. than we do, right? The lack so, of presence of mind of a current situation. Yeah, it is. So, I mean, I don't and, know what uh, the real solution for that is. I would like to hear perspectives, because I think you guys are probably more conservative politically than I am, uh, although I, I, lean, I lean pretty conservative, but... Um, I would like to hear your perspective on that, hearing me say that. So, like, Michael Wilbon from ESPN was talking this or yesterday about Drew Brees' apology. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think Drew, what Drew Brees said was fine. I just think he should have said more. Like, I understand that this, you guys have a different relationship with, with the concept of patriotism than I do, mm -hmm. but still, that is deeply offensive to me. That you, you, can say, you should be able to say that out loud. I feel like you should be able to say that. And I, you should have to, because you have to confront the fact uh, if you don't have that, if he doesn't have that conversation with people in his locker room specifically, mm -hmm. with like, I understand that you guys <clears throat> feel differently about this than I do, but that is deeply offensive to me. And if I react a certain way to it, it's because it is deeply offensive to me. Right. Just the same way that the way the police present themselves frequently is deeply offensive to you. Right. Like we, we both are allowed to be offended by things, but ultimately if we want to live in this country together, we have to move past that shit and figure out a way to not be dicks to each other. Yeah, you know and, I mean? I, and I had this conversation about the Drew Brees sitch um, where I, I had said to a, a friend of mine, I was like, man, it's bullshit the way Drew Brees is getting drugged for this yeah, just because of what he believes in. And it was during an interview where some questions, questions get clipped for time and everything oh, else. Oh, yeah, it's, like, uh, it's not like he fucking called a press conference and just said, hey, no. I, don't, I don't like this thing that happened four years ago. Yeah. That's not how it went down. And that's why everybody loves <laughs> podcasts, because this just goes on forever. It's unedited, yeah. and congratulations, whatever you say, you say. Yeah. Uh, but you have plenty of time to do so. There is no time limits, and there is no editing. Um, what my friend had said back to me made sense, though. He said, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily think that people were mad about what he said. It's the time at which he said it. Because mm -hmm. all of this was going down, and it was like a white guy jumping out saying, "Hey, man, I I don't want to, you know, I hate kneeling on the flag and everything." Mm -hmm. That maybe it, it, the message would have been fine had it come a little later um, or it, earlier. He should. I mean, he's he's been saying it for a long time, but he's 
Breeze is one of those guys that's definitely backed up. When he he's not one of those guys that says, "Oh, I have black friends." He's one of those guys that has spent his time and millions of dollars trying to help the community. Correct. Uh, and, for years, yeah, Katrina, everything. For sure, yeah. So it's like, I don't know. You just got to be a little. I, I feel like the people that fucking tore him down have to understand that that clip was cut out of the middle of an interview. And that everybody wants, everybody's just hearing sound bites or yeah, seeing video yeah. clips, and, and that's and you, the shame of it. You have to weigh the sound bite against his body of work. Right. 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 Like, obviously, he doesn't feel stuff. And Wilbon made a good point. He says, I still don't think Drew Brees gets it. And I think he's right about that. I don't think Drew Brees gets it. I don't think a lot of us do either, because it's hard to put yourself in that situation. It's hard to understand things from the perspective of someone that has a completely different life experience than you. It's but a, during the heat of this moment, and, mm-hmm. and here's what I have a problem with with Michael Wilbon and everybody else mm-hmm. jumping on Drew Brees, is that, that support really wasn't there for Kaepernick years ago when he did it, right? No. Uh, at all. No. It, is, it wasn't just white. It is now. It wasn't just white people that were... Yeah, like, but, but Wilbon yeah. and those guys never fucking stuck their neck out there. He was doing shit with the NFL for ESPN. So mm-hmm. like... They didn't say anything until now. Once everybody said it was okay with this one, with this case in particular, with, with George Floyd, <clears throat> everybody united and said this is wrong. And mm. now everybody's coming out saying, all right, yeah, fuck it. Uh, and then dragging everybody. Uh, Aaron Rodgers yeah. was the latest today. He got drugged by Martellus Bennett, uh, the, uh, t- the tight end. Because um, Aaron Rodgers came out and said, hey, man, we need to do better. And uh, mm. you know, I support Black Lives Matter and everything else. And he was like, no, you fucking don't, dude. And he goes, you weren't cool with X, Y, and Z, you know, when the, the protest was going on mm-hmm. in the NFL. And fuck you. And he'd played there for seven months. Now, Martellus Bennett, if you don't remember, his brother was the one in Vegas who tried to accuse the, the police of uh, racial yeah. discrimination and racial profiling. It turns out that he had run out of a fucking mall, scared and knocked over something. And, mm-hmm. you know, once the footage came out, you know, he had to apologize. And the, the police had nothing to do with race during that. Uh, whatsoever, and uh, I think you're going to get a lot of that. Um, so whoever's going to come out and speak at this time, over the, the the course of the next month, month mm-hmm. and a half, as this you know slowly starts to die down, because they did get justice. The other three officers did get arrested. Um, so the mm-hmm. protest was not for 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 not at well, the end of the I, day. I, but I, I, I think I you you got to be real careful as a white man in public saying shit right now, because it, they could take it. Anybody can take I don't it know one if way you need, I don't think you need to be careful. I think we need to not be careful, to be honest. I think people need to say what they're thinking and challenge themselves. Like, if Drew Brees comes... I hate this fucking half ass apology stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I, w- I, I wish he would have just said, hey, you know what? I was fucking stupid. He tell, issued another tell, apology, tell by me, the way. Tell me, what you, yeah. tell me what you want me to say, and I'm not trying to, like, just parrot your words. I want to understand your perspective. That's what he should have said. Like, explain they to me... They should think before they speak. Yeah, for sure. Like, so think, explain to say me... What, people saying what they think. Well, people are saying what they think, but they're not thinking before they do that. They need yeah. to think about how they're saying it. And you're talking about time and opportunity and, uh, you know, white guy out there, you know, he should have said something, should have said this, but at a different time. Right. Well, I mean, he could have said the same thing at that time, but he could have said it better. He could have framed his words better. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and I'm going to use the only thing I have in life to use is that situation on Saturday where the only reason I, w- I believe that I was able to make the decision I made in that moment is because I framed my mind and made the decision for- beforehand before I got there Bef- on the drive there that I don't want to take American life. Why would I want to do that? Regardless if I disagree with you or not, how does that fit with my morals, my uh, patriotism, my love of country and its people? It mm-hmm. doesn't. Now, if they would have raised that weapon to anyone else or to myself or anything, Absolutely. I'm more than prepared to do that. Mm. However, do I want to take American life and cause a bigger situation? Take out all the tactical BS, all the, Mm. you know, what that situation was in danger. No, I thought about it beforehand. I made the decision. If this happens, I will. If this happens, I will. Yeah. It's the same thing whenever you have something to say. But the interesting part of it, and and going back to like little sound bites and little video clips, do you know the first time I saw your video as it started to go viral? The initial comments were, white supremacist is out in the street with guns. I don't know if you heard that or saw those comments. I I assumed something like that would be out there. I haven't heard it. but uh, Those are the first comments I read. I had had to rewatch the video. Exactly. But I had to rewatch the video, and I was like, shit, is it? 
Let me watch it again because the comments were like, oh, look at this fucking Nazi, this fucking, you know. And I, was I like, got called a Nazi that day multiple times on my way with those rifles after I took them to get them to the police. A lot of people call me that. And the uh, another – I hadn't seen any comment like you just mentioned, but mm -hmm. another comment that I have seen was uh, someone just assuming that that person – was carrying a rifle legally and that I just approached him with a pistol and stole it from him. Um, again, it's not just a lack of context. It's jumping to conclusions. Mm -hmm. Yep. And yeah. I mean, I, I, I had a feeling that there was going to be someone who jumped to the conclusion of white supremacists. I'm a white guy, bald head with a beard who was in the military and I love guns. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Big deal. I say the I same saw, thing all the time. I saw black Americans out there in Seattle that Saturday all plate carried up with a rifle. And you know what? He had a sick setup. And I was looking at him like, you know, I want to, I would like to talk to him. This is not the time or place. Yeah, <laughs> I do not. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, you can't like, hey, you want to tell me where you got that gear? Cause I'm kind of jealous. Yeah. Yeah. Honest. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was out there and like he had some sick gear. His rifle was set up. He, he obviously knew what he was doing or if he had someone set it up for him. I mean, he could have probably dressed better for the situation because I don't think he could have ran very far with the pants hanging down. But, uh, and he was just chill, man. He his body behavior said, "I'm relaxed. What are you doing?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I saw. So I didn't, I saw I didn't a bunch have to of, watch him. I saw a bunch of dum dums running around, a bunch of white dudes running around in like shorts and flip flops. Look, going to a gunfight in shorts is not something that I'm uh, opposed to. In fact, I've done that. Uh, <laughs> Fighting but, a holy war in shorts. Bro. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I've done it. I've, do, I've, I've, I've done it in shorts and flip flops before. But that was because our base got attacked. It wasn't because. I walked out. I got out of bed that morning. Really, you know what? Let's go. Let's go do some stuff. But I don't. I've I've got the motivation to go out here and protest my cause, but not so much to put shoes on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe put some shoes on next time. <laughs> Anyways, back to all this other stuff. I feel like we need to make a lot better effort to understand each other. Like your situation is a great example of that people see the way you look and see your actions in a vacuum in a very small window of time and make all of these assumptions about it. But really you're a fucking veteran and a patriot and somebody that cares more about American life probably than your own life. And that's, that applies to a lot of us. It applies to a lot of fucking cops because they're not doing it for the money. I'll tell you that yeah. these people feel deeply connected to their communities and it's embarrassing to them the same way it is to you. When bad shit happens, when other shitty cops do stuff, they feel deep embarrassment and anger and frustration over that. And people, when they're angry and frustrated, do stupid shit sometimes on both sides i th i would never excuse looting i think that's the dumbest shit ever you know it was I mean? it was everywhere and honestly i thought it was so petty and ridiculous and it really drew the line on who's here for uh selflessness and who's here for selfishness yeah i feel like, and, uh, like i had people walk up in front of my news crew knocking on the windows of buildings trying to figure out if they could break it or not i had one come up directly next to me like why haven't we gotten here and i just looked at him like there's a news crew right here dude be my guest yeah do it <laughs> yeah I, I presence of mind again you yeah. know <laughs> do I, people did people on the ground know sorry to interrupt you no, go ahead. um did, did, did people on the ground know that you were with a news crew no not not before that moment and i'm gonna actually very confidently say not during and directly after that moment and uh, because they all thought we were undercover police. Yeah, that's were, that's what it looked like in the video. I, I thought either because I saw the white supremacist comments first. So I was like, all right, is he white supremacist? And then the way you were able to disarm the that rifle so quickly, I was like, eh, I think he's probably military. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't see anybody to the right or left of you that, that you were protecting <laughs> I was by myself. Yeah, that, that, that you were protecting anyone. So uh, when that video started to circulate and, you know, good on everybody writing these articles about you, I didn't know. Uh, you know, I didn't know one way or the other what you were doing there. And uh, now in proper context, this makes sense of like, all right, this is a trained professional who is there protecting a news it crew. Is, and not but more importantly than being a trained professional, he is someone that had the right attitude to be in that situation. Right. It's it's use the amount of force necessary to get the job done. He didn't fucking pistol whip the guy. Right. He snatched the rifle out of his hand, rolled his eyes at the guy and dumped the mag and fucking empty the chamber yeah like get, the, like, get out of here you fucking trooper. i knew okay it. i haven't heard it put like that and i mean it's a little weird that it's about me but it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's essentially what i saw as soon as you dumped the mag and, and uh cleared the chamber i was like oh he's in the military Got i told it. him to get the fuck out of here i mean i watched it in a clip i know i did it i had the pistol up i had the rifle i said like, get the fuck out of here and i flipped the pistol and 
told him to get out of I here. Kinda, so, I kind of, I mean, I know it's, I know this is like a complicated situation and everything, but I, I almost feel like we should start deputizing people that are protest leaders or something. Like Wyatt Earp, hey, he like, deputized yeah. his buddies that he yeah. knew were capable to handle a situation that was going to be way yeah. out of his own hands. Yeah. yeah, like honestly, I don't know, I don't know what the solution is in that regard or what that would look like. I know there would be taking on a liability, a lot of liability. By oh, doing that. a huge liability. I get it. But Overzealous. Like right now, BLM in in uh, New York announced yesterday that they're going to try to start their own armed, essentially police force that polices black neighborhoods, and they two of their guys that are training these guys are former special forces operators. Mm. They're U S army special forces operators, black guys that are training them to do whatever the fuck they're planning to do in their community. And I wonder they if they just they're... fit a terrorist organization right there. What's that now? They just place themselves in a terrorist organization if they plan to not, if they, if they take it further than policing, which, you know, our police force, I hope would be the, uh, the basis for what they would try to do, you know, protect and serve. Right. But if they take it, they're pushing in a, a political agenda through violence. Yep. They just yeah. cause a whole world of hurt. Yeah, that, that would be really dumb. So I wonder why not, why not fought, why, from, from the, and again, I don't want to speak for black people or presume you're anything about that, but why not uh, become cops? Yeah. Yeah. You know exactly. I mean? Like if you think something's what, one of my uh, old first sergeants, uh, Kenny Johnson, he's actually a sergeant major in the army now. Um, used to say, if you're unhappy with the way things are, rise to s- some level of power and significance through hard work and mm-hmm. then affect change once you get into a position where you can. And I feel like uh, that might be asking a little much because they, their community distrusts the police so much at this point. Right. But somebody at some point has got to fucking do something, right? Uh, from our perspective, we can learn more and... Uh, try to think outside of our own little little vacuum and from their perspective you have to get directly involved either either the plan is to tear down the system and we're going to go through some kind of war of some sort or the plan is to rebuild the system and we do it together and become a part of it yeah that's the i to, to me those are the only two solutions and i can I we like can we back up and get take a different scope that i think is really important yeah, yeah fire away if we back up from just the local cities and then our states and then our country and everything that's going on right now that's absolutely horrible and back up far enough to where you're looking at the you know a global scale and history every great civilization for thousands of years since it's been recorded has fallen from within mm. it has not been others coming in and destroying it and now you take a look at what's going on in our own country what does that make us look like to others yeah we're weak we're divided Now's the time to come at us, which I don't know about you, but one of the scariest things to me is our country being invaded because not just like the fight, like that fight's going to be on. Absolutely. I have no doubt about that. But, uh, and that honestly, I think would unite all the division we have. However, I, why would I want my, uh, my country invaded? Well, you that's, it goes like, back to a lot, a lot of people say I want September 12th without September 11th. Uh, I don't know if that's possible, yeah. right? But I don't, I, yeah. I agree with you. I think uh, like it, it behooves all of us. You you believe what you believe, right? You you have your standards, and you grew up the way you did, and you believe X Y Z about the flag, about patriotism, about criminal justice, about police and their role. And this is from both sides of the aisle. You everybody believes something a little bit different, but I feel like we all believe. And if you don't, you should. We all believe that everybody should be afforded the same rights, and everybody should be protected in the same way. And uh, if you don't believe that, to be honest, first of all, if you're wearing a uniform, fucking get rid of it because you don't deserve to wear it. And secondly, don't walk around calling yourself a patriot if you don't believe that. If, if, if justice isn't for everyone, then, it's, then it doesn't exist for anyone, right? Because the definition of justice is you know, an, even, an even playing scale for, ever, for yeah. everybody. And it's even, supposed to be you blind, know. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if you don't believe in, in justice for everyone, then... Uh, then first of all, just remove yourself completely from the conversation because you're not a patriot at all. If you do believe for, in justice for everyone and you disagree with a group of people who feels oppressed that they're not oppressed or not, then you really got to jump in there and start looking into stuff, right? No one's got all the answers, but you, you at least have to be willing. And again, I'm not criticizing uh, the protest side because that's not my community. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about myself and about all of us. We have to be able to look at this from an objective viewpoint and see 
issues that exist and try to find solutions. There's no version of this that works where we, we give up and don't find a solution. There has to be a solution. Um, period. Well, I mean, I, I would argue something you said. You said it's not your community. I would argue and say it is your community. It's Americans. That's that's our community. It is. Right, our, but... our our unity lies in our own borders and those we send outside our borders and we have that we have allies with. I would argue and say that people need to start looking at the bigger skit picture. You know, it's you know, shop locally, act globally is essentially what it is um, for a community. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And if you but if, <clears throat> but if you truly believe that, then. Uh then i mean think about it as a family i guess if somebody is being a dick to exactly you, how it should be thought of yeah if somebody's being a dick to somebody in your family you're going to step up and do something even if it's somebody else in your family you know what i mean yeah like if it's correcting your peers it's yeah. correcting the protesters pulling out the rioters yeah and there's been a lot of that i mean look it doesn't take a whole lot of people to riot to make it look like everyone's rioting. And it doesn't take a whole lot of cops being fucking pieces of shit to make it look like all cops are pieces of shit. But that's only because human beings are narrow minded and stupid, right? We're, we're, I think we're it comes down to a survival instinct. Uh, we notice what's wrong and what's dangerous, and that's going to stand out more because mm -hmm. we need to learn how to react to that. Everything else is just noise that is right. nothing. Yeah. So you have one person acting <laughs> a fool, causing threat. I saw, one per I saw a person pull a rifle in a city, in a street full of hundreds and hundreds scattered from that one person. Yeah. So Yeah, there's 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 gravity to to danger. Absolutely. Yeah. It's true. And it's it's uh and I, I feel like uh equivocating like just just like we can't make excuses for shitty cops or dumb ideology that we've had for a long time, protesters can't equivocate when it comes to rioters. Mm -hmm. Like you have to clearly just because like get, i'm not gonna get into white privilege or any of that nonsense but uh just just because we're in a better position right now than they are means that we need to be a little bit more careful about the way we talk about things and the way we listen and the way we act right just like there it's heated over there on the protest side you need to be careful who you associate yourself with you need to make sure that you're not equivocating on something just because it might make your point look bad you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if it makes your point look better in the end and it's more effective if this shit happens, if, if people are starting to do dumb shit and you fucking slap them and get them out of there, that's what, that's what helps everybody move along. So this is a challenge to everyone to make sure that you're policing your community, both the people that look like you and the people that don't. I'm, I'm really happy to see uh, these young black kids fucking slapping the fuck out of antifa dudes mm -hmm. like there was a i don't know who posted it but there was a dude on uh a dude went live on instagram last night a uh, black kid and he was with his friends that they were out there protesting i can't remember what city it was in but there's two fucking white kids walking next to him like talking all this shit so he turns the camera on himself with them in the background and he goes hey these motherfuckers aren't with us yeah like they're they're the ones trying to instigate and cost shit we're just trying to protest and they're like don't fil don't film us they're fucking white kids and all black with masks pulled yeah. in their face <laughs> that's that's the mo like you're a fucking coward dude how bad is it out there in seattle for antifa um it seems like it's the heartland for antifa <sighs> it seems like uh seattle and portland are pretty heavy yeah um and from what i saw they uh just because they can sh they show up in numbers and you know they cause the violence, like I said, that's going to stand out more. People tend to stay away. Mm. So I mean, it's it's pretty bad. However, you know, I'm not gonna. I don't know. I don't know much about all this. I just know what I see and what I observe and the actions that take place around me. So gotcha. I didn't know if you were briefed on it beforehand. Like before you take these gigs, if they go in and tell you, "Hey, man, so and so is going to be showing up at this. We had a uh, Milo Yatinopoulos's bodyguard aren't." Uh, mm -hmm. uh, bodyguard on and um, uh, again veteran and he said hey man we were briefed on it before we go to certain places who's going to be there and why I didn't know if, yeah. if uh, the news that you know you were working for gets that info before they they go out they on, do. on remote they do and we did uh, I did make sure to have a you know a brief a conversation about all that and what was going on um, so we were aware that there was going to be some of that going on, but me and the rest of the guys that I work with were all, we were all out there, you know, and, uh, we had our own form of communication going on from what we see, you know, a little more experienced eyes out mm -hmm. there talking about what's going on the other day when I was uh, out there, there were people with melee weapons at one point 
individuals slipping in from the back of the crowd, weaving into the front. And when several of us saw that and went through our line of communication and we uh, pulled our crews out. But uh, I mean, the protesters did awesome and they handled that situation and it was great. Well, look, I mean, for you and for most police officers, it, it is going to be really, really difficult to distinguish between someone's there who, to cause trouble and someone who's there. It's an there insurgency. To, yeah, it's, it's, we've, we've dealt with this shit for 20 goddamn years now. The, uh, the, con- yeah. the concept of insurgency where the enemy looks like the fucking uh, your friend, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, we've had so much, but y- how many raids have you been on where your, your platoon leader or whomever it was, your captain, uh, is like, hey, people live here, let's fucking remember that we're here to help these people and, and kill shitheads and not fucking ruin their lives, not, right. not ruin good people's lives. It's a delicate balance, and to be honest, the only way we were ever successful was when the community got involved. Like, mm-hmm. protesters out there, cops are depending on you to do the right shit. They need you as much as you need them when, you, when you're fucking, uh, when somebody breaks into your house. Right. You know what I mean? If, if those two groups, if protesters and police don't work together, then this is going to get fucking way worse. You know yeah, I mean? and it's supposed to get bad in Washington, D.C. this weekend. Uh, they're expecting record crowds, so we'll see how that all turns out. What's a weird weapon that you carry on you that no one knows about? Uh, He's got a if mace. you read the comments, it's brass balls. Um, <laughs> I got a set of those too, my man. I've been asked brass. all kinds of weird questions about my underwear lately. Um, <laughs> weird weapon that I carry that no one knows. I have it. You know, I have this little. I don't know if it's around me right now. I don't think it is. I don't even know what company makes it. I have this little tiny glass breaker and tiny knife thing that I keep in my in a place <laughs> and so if something wait why, happens, why, are, like, why are you cagey about where you keep it is, yeah. it, is it shoved up your dick hole or something you what's got, going you on key, you keister in it is that in the prison wallet <laughs> there's just some things you learn to do and you should probably do them privately <laughs> <laughs> no it's uh, um i had i had several you know melee weapons on me that uh were discreet and then uh i i my goal my goal that day was to be as gray man as possible, mm. and that was exactly what I wanted to do. And I knew the hardest thing about that was going to be uh, my own smart ass comments in my mind coming coming out of my mouth. So yeah, I made yeah. sure, like you know, I told myself there's going to be a lot of people here I don't agree with. There's going to be a lot of things I see in here I don't agree with. Just shut the fuck up and get through it. Yeah. So that's what I did. And uh, but. I don't know, man. I was carrying my Glock 19 Gen 5 with a Surefire, but I carried it in my bag because bumping into hundreds of people, they people noticed I had mag uh, mag holsters on my side. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want a pistol to be out there. And how honestly, think about it. How hard is someone to walk up to you, grab your jacket, pull it up, and rip your pistol from you? Yeah. yeah. Especially at that a, point, they just took control. Especially so Glock. I chose to go through my bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I chose to go through my bag. And you know what? I was very fortunate that it looked out for me. Um, it was very unfortunate the next day because one strap on a shoulder for like 12 hours is not a good idea. Um, but yeah, I, I would say the most important thing out there is I framed my mind before I went into, into that day. And I think that is something that needs to be, be out there a lot more, um, you know, consciously. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, look, this is the point in the show. We get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. Who'd you like to give the, the drinking bro of the week to? Holy heck. Uh, wish I prepped for that one. Um, crap. So I want to tell you a little story right after this situation happened. And after I got to my car, I shot a message to a hero of mine and it's probably kind of lame, but Travis Haley, Okay. Straight up, straight, straight up. Travis Haley and uh, his company, Haley Strategic, since I was in the Marine Corps and all the way through now, his philosophy on being a responsibly armed citizen and training, you know, that and along with the, you know, being a volunteer who Kalen Wojcik, uh, um, he teaches greatly. You got to seek more training and you are, if you're a volunteer, you take on that responsibility. So I'm going to do two training bros. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That has such a big influence on that situation. And when I shot him a message, I said, you have no idea how much your philosophy and your training came into this moment, being a responsibly armed citizen, because they weren't and they had armed themselves. But I saw the situation where they didn't know what they were doing. I could 
you know, frighten these guys and get this from them. And uh, I shot him a message with a screenshot of the news newsreel and yeah, him. And I talked to Kaylin the other day and I, I've never fanboyed so hard. And uh, <laughs> I was exhausted after that. Con- it was amazing. So they're, uh, I would definitely say those two. Definitely. That's, 100%. Uh, that's great drinking bros but, of the week uh, to yeah. me. Yeah. And we really yeah. appreciate you uh, being out there, putting your ass on the line and keeping people safe and shit. I mean, there's a lot of folks out there that are, everybody's pretty stressed out. A lot of people are letting their anger and, and fear get the better of them. And I'm glad to see that uh, you're setting a good example on a national mm-hmm. level at this point. I know that seems surreal to you probably right now, but a lot of eyeballs are it's, a lot of fucking people right now. And it's important. It's not national. It's worldwide. Well, I've yeah, had yeah. people hit me up from France, Czechoslovakia, U- U- uh, United Kingdom, um, Australia, Argentina, Peru, Mexico, Canada, uh, Russia and several other countries I can't come to mind, but yeah, it's, it's overwhelming. Like just the support that just flew in and it's from both sides. Yeah, yeah. I can go in and there and look at the, you know, thank you for not taking these guys live. And I look at their page and it's, it's clear that, uh, they would have been one of the ones out there protesting or even rioting. Mm. And I'm getting floods to my DM saying, thank you for not taking our lives and you know doing it responsibly. But not every situation is going to be as, you, you know specific like that that was a very unique situation mm-hmm. i was able to take take those rifles yeah, or sure. smash those. where can everybody find you on social media or do you want people to find you on social media more importantly actually i would like people to find me in two different places on social media okay. if i may yeah go ahead um to get directly to me it's uh instagram underscore shooter underscore rugi underscore rugi is r-u-g-h-i um that is directly to me and what i'm trying to do launch this platform of a business into the uh into the community and hopefully hopefully i don't feel i have a place to be but i got put there be a a good example and speak for unity for america and uh presence of mind and thinking before acting and speaking the other one is a a project I've been sitting on that's now kind of taken off. Um, Firewatch Official on Instagram. It's a place for veterans, of active duty, military, law enforcement, first responders um, to come to and put their own individual stories on completely anonymously or, uh, you know, if they want to be recognized so they can have a positive place to go to on social media. I mean, it's just click over. How often are we all on our phones, right? Yeah. And uh, now you're in a positive space where you can read <laughs> and relate to others. Um and a friend of mine who takes that mission very seriously, he's running that for me at the time because I got so much going on. So you hit up, hit him up, and uh, you know things will be great. Things will uh, hopefully take off and do good things for our community. And Hell I mean yeah. that by us Americans. Mm. Hell yeah! Hey man, thanks for being on the show, dude. Uh, fantastic dude. Fantastic um, selfless act. So yeah. I mean, look, there's a lot of, again, the, people are really stressed out right now, and a lot of people are making bad decisions. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, I think we're getting, I hope we turn a corner where we start listening a little bit more. I'm tired of preaching about this shit. Um, although the response to the things that we've been saying have, have largely been positive. I think people want, I feel like people genuinely want to do the right thing. And I feel like, uh, you know, the bullshit that we've allowed ourselves to believe over the last gajillion years or whatever stops us from doing it. The fight or flight. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that is out of our control on a large scope that affects the way we think about things day to day. But you have to, you know, face those things and tackle them and then go out there and do the right thing, even when it doesn't necessarily benefit you directly. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it from a safety perspective in that, that situation, I think you can tell when somebody's a little bitch, frankly, and uh, just snatch the gun away from them. But, <laughs> All right. That's uh, th- yeah. I mean, I could tell by looking at them, they were yeah. also uh fire and destruction. I mean, as Marine and in- military, how many times have you had to snatch a rifle from someone who you knew yeah. was either in a headspace <laughs> where they weren't going to do anything or couldn't, or yeah. they didn't know what they were doing. So yeah. violence of action took over and done. Yeah, but it, but uh, you know that that could have gone. It could have been a much different situation. Uh, and, yes, yes, it could have. Uh, and it could have been a much different situation if that person had have been had been, uh, I don't know, better with the weapon system. And it could have been a much different situation if you were some uh, unnecessarily aggressive shitbag. Right, a lot of stuff could have gone wrong mm-hmm. there. And I again appreciate the example that you set by one you. by by your it. actions, but also by your attitude considering people who disagree with you part of your community as well because that's very important to us absolutely absolutely Absolutely. uh thank you for your time today sir we greatly appreciate it 
I appreciate it as well, and uh, thank you for having me on. It's been it's been a good ride. Absolutely. <laughs> Take care, buddy. You as well. Good dude, man. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, it, it's there is great people in America. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There is there is great people out there trying to do good deeds. Um, Dan, we got some sponsors who who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. But mm-hmm. after that, I kind of want to chat about what's going on. Um, in Washington, D.C., and, and more importantly, in the stock market as well, because I don't understand these numbers and what's happening. Why right they're now. up, you mean? Way up. Yeah. Like through the roof. And, and, and I kind of want to get your take on it and what's going to happen with the economy, because right now, man, I, shit, we're, we're recording this on a Friday right now. I'm going to go ahead and look up the, the market numbers. Um, it's up 800 points right now. Mm-hmm. Um, today, yeah, it's back up to twenty seven thousand. Twenty seven thousand already, which is the fastest recovery in history so far. Yeah, but you got to kind of expect that if there's a pandemic that shuts off business and then people start to go back to business, obviously there's going to be a huge rebound. I think if uh, things go back to about the same levels they were before, that will demonstrate that uh, Trump's economic policies are. I think will validate them. Right? I, I do too, and, and I want to get your thoughts on it. Um, obviously. Look, we had a guest, and, and we do have sponsors who pay for this yeah. show to be on the air, and we're, we're super grateful to them. Uh, first and foremost, GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Man, if you didn't get the 30% off Memorial Day sale for the bundle package, my condolences to you. Yeah. Uh, but they still have everything else, 25% off. So you can go through the entire store. You can loot the online store, Dan. Um, I don't think they want us using that, probably. In their, Loots the online store. In their marketing. <laughs> Although somebody did uh, somewhere, I can't remember where it was, but somebody looted like a coach store in a, in a, oh, yeah. like in a rural area. Yeah, and, uh, like, and the Oscar gowns. Like, yeah. there's, there's, a, there's a company that does, and it's terrible because they spend you know a, an entire year on one dress. Yeah. And then somebody's went in there and wiped out all the dresses in like I wonder what the weirdest minutes. thing someone's looted is. Uh, like the weirdest thing, sex toys is what I heard. Ooh, like somebody was, some, there was a picture of somebody coming out with a bunch of dildos, and it was just like, I, "Hey, get what you can, mm, I guess." I but guess. Do you need that many mm. dildos? Uh, strange. Yeah. Uh, Anywho, if you are, if you were one of those privileged people who got a free dildo out there, um, use it on a ghost bed. Mm. Uh, make sure you get that protective cover over the mattress, though, obviously, because uh, could be a lot of squirting. Out I mean, there. if you're looting dildos, you should probably go ahead and get one of the protective covers. Yeah. <laughs> Because you probably make life decisions that are going to affect the, the mattress. Yeah, but go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and loot the online store, man. You can do whatever you want to your computer. You can try to reach into it and grab out the items if you want. Mm. <laughs> try to reach inside your own computer screen and, and try to grab a mattress out of there. Uh, as always, they got a 36-month page. You go program no interest at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros and all these deals are applicable with it um including the the mattress when you go to mattress right now you get two free pillows and the pillows are just as great as the goddamn mattresses so go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and get them deals send them deals next up we got killcliffcbd.com it's the best in the biz it is my god man <clears throat> we get tagged in killcliff cbd cans probably 50 60 times a day yeah um, and I understand it. We try to repost them all. Um, it is our favorite fucking beverage on earth right now. I drink a can of this shit every single night. And if you're not mixing it with vodka on the weekends. Yeah, you're fucked up. You're not doing your life right. I'll be, uh, I'll be drinking it tonight for sure. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Vodka and CBD. Yeah. Uh, fights Kill around Cliff. tomorrow. I'll be drinking it for the fights tomorrow night. Yep. Excited about that. Go to KillCliffCBD.com today. Promo code Drinking Bros gets you 20% off and free shipping. With cans, free shipping is a big fucking deal, dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you get a case of it. There's three amazing flavors. Uh, mango, uh, orange kush, and the grapest of all time. Grape's my favorite. Uh, 25 milligrams of CBD in every single can. Uh, and you're not going to piss hot. It's Kill Cliff. So there's no THC in this. So if you're out there, you know, taking drug tests for work and everything else, uh, Kill Cliff is the only name you can trust in this business. Otherwise, man, you don't know where the fuck you're getting it from, from these local head shops and shit like that. I would not recommend it, man. The regulations aren't there yet, but they yeah. are in place for KillCliffCBD.com. Promo code Drinking Bros gets you 20% off and free shipping. Next up, it's time to get them boners on. 
Go to GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros. A lot of bars are opening back up. Damn straight they are. You don't want to fucking... Uh, you yeah. don't want some poor woman that's been looking for dick this whole time. Mm-hmm. You don't want to get fucking drunk as shit, take her home, and then have your wiener not work No, out. no. You don't want to underperform, especially yeah. after the quarantine. Matter of fact, you better overperform. I would say uh, go ahead and take the uh, supplement to make sure that you overperform. You yes. want to set a good standard coming out of the gate. It's yes, like a do. show of force. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Goddamn right. It's like a battering ram. Yeah. Well, it's more like a, a an A-10 shooting uh, its its main gun into an open field near where you're about to start raiding houses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like put everybody in the area on notice that this dick is here and it's here to stay. Oh, and the only way you can do that is at GetRoman.com forward slash Drinking Bros where they have free shipping which is amazing, um, and they also have a free online doctor's visit, so you don't have to go to your fucking doctor anymore. There's a reason why Roman is bigger than Viagra now. Nobody wants to go into their doctor and tell them their fucking dick doesn't work. Um, go to GetRoman.com forward slash Drinking Bros today. comes in a discreet package. Your wife won't know, your mistress, your kids. No one will know except for you. I'll know. Uh, last but not least, DukeCannon.com. Everybody keeps stealing my Duke Cannon, dude. I'm down to two. Well, I'm down to two. They're they're props for the desks, people. Um, and when you stay, when you when you loot them and you take them home, Giorgio, and you use them as your own, you're depriving uh, the audience of the beautiful the beautiful visual that is on my desk on Drinking Bros Podcast YouTube channel. Um, right now, I've got the productivity in my hand. Uh, this is a huge fucking jug of this goddamn shit. So when you order it, it's only nine bucks a piece, and it lasts forever. All you need is like a quarter size because the viscosity of this thing will, will cover your entire body no matter how filthy of a little pig you are, dude. Mm. It'll clean everything. You can get all four for 30 bucks. No matter how many truffles you've been trying to <laughs> trying to snort out during the day, you piggy little bitch. You can get clean. This one was was uh, from you guys. Uh, you guys wanted us to have Duke Cannon because you wanted a promo code. Um, you're already huge fans, anyways, and, and so are we. Uh, so they were cool enough when we reached out and just said, "Yeah, man, we'll give you a promo code." So it's Drinking Bros. You get twenty percent off and uh, and I believe free shipping on that at DukeCannon.com. Get that four pack, dude. That'll last you for a whole goddamn year. Uh, DukeCannon.com. I might. Promo code Drinking Bros. When you check out, um, that'll get you that discount at DukeCannon.com. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking at the market today, Dan. It's up over 800 points right mm-hmm. now. We're recording this on Friday afternoon because um, we got another surprise guest over the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's a mystery that you have these riots, right? Yep. COVID magically goes away. No one fucking cares anymore. Um, and... All of a sudden, the market starts shooting up through the goddamn roof. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't uh, care about the market. Right. I, I, here's the thing. Because I, I don't think it's reflective of anything. I think it's all a scam. I think it's, uh, I think it's a money-washing station for wit- rich people. Yeah. And I, I don't believe it. I think it's, it's like, uh, it's, it's like a, in my opinion, it seems like one of those criminal enterprises. Like if you watch Peaky Blinders, for example, mm-hmm. these guys own uh, a horse racing facility. And what they do is they'll build up a horse so it looks good. Everybody bets on it, and then the horse loses, right? right. I think it's a fucking scam, to be honest. Uh, I think that there's price fixing going on. I think that there's insider trading, particularly within our own government, that's mm-hmm. happening. Um, as a matter of fact, we just saw price fixing with chicken. Yeah. For fuck's sake. Yeah. If, you don't think, if you think they'll fuck with your food supply, but they won't fuck with your money market, you're out of your goddamn mind. I think this is all smoke and mirrors, to be honest. And I think the reason it's going back up now is because uh, this is what the media and the government want. They want you divided. They want you mad at you, <coughs> so nobody's mad at me. Like, if you imagine walking into a room and everybody's pissed off at you, but you can start a fight. You can you can distract them by starting a fight with two other people. That's exactly what they fucking do every single goddamn time. Remember the last time there were massive riots like this? Uh, yes, twenty sixteen in July. Yeah, yeah. It was four years ago, almost to the month. Crazy. It's weird how that works, isn't it? But it's yeah. not weird. It's not weird when something happened once. It's like, oh, that's that's weird. Could be a coincidence. When it happens a second time, that is what we like to call proof <laughs> or evidence. <laughs> Uh, do not trust your government. They are not on your side. Politicians are scumbags, and so is uh, so is the media. Yeah, so I, I'm because I'm looking at these numbers and I'm like, shit. I, I, it's tough to say fuck the market in my opinion, and in that it's all for rich people because there's a lot of people out there with 401ks. 
um, well, you know, sure, at yeah. their jobs yeah. and the, the, their money goes into the, the market and oftentimes they can't pull it until they retire. But so. this is, the, you know, you realize that that's the same thing that the government does with your taxes, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you're getting a huge tax refund, if you're getting like a four or $5,000 tax refund at the end of the year, that means the government sat on, held an escrow four or 5,000 of your dollars right. that you could have invested on your own and they invested it and made 10x that amount of money on it and then they just gave you back the fucking scraps. You're loaning money to the government, and in this case, your 401k is loaning money to rich assholes for them to make money off it. Now, if it's mutually beneficial and you you also make money off of it, yep. maybe that's a fine deal to, do, to, to have. And if you want to play the market, act like you're a rich person. Think like a rich person. You know what I mean? You can still take advantage. Just because it's corrupt doesn't mean you can't take advantage of yeah. it. I don't mean to say that at all. You can absolutely take advantage of it and make money. Yeah, because like a lot of these companies are set up where they match four hundred one k's. So you know, yeah. depending upon how much you well, put maybe in not per now. month, and you can double it. Maybe not now, but they were uh, before this pandemic. Um, obviously, we only got about ten people working here, so we don't have shit like that. No. But um, you know, uh, it's it's good for a lot of working Americans who mm -hmm. look, man. This is a lot of people's retirement too. So. Um, that's that's interesting to see, and especially as we get closer and closer to this election. Uh, the other number that I wanted to chat with you about was um, the unemployment number. Yeah, the jobs number came down. Whew. Look, the, the, the reported number, I think, was somewhere in the 14-ish range, but the real number, because it seems like a lot of people who were actually laid off were being reported as uh, just not currently working, but they still had their job because yeah. there was confusion about that. I don't think it was intentional or anything like that, but uh, the real number was probably somewhere more like 17 to 19 percent and it's now down to like 12 ish 12 and a half give or take yeah on. i mean uh let's um, see it, it's 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 definitely decreased and and to be honest if things do continue to trend like this and the the dow continues to to stretch up towards thirty thousand again i think it was at 29 before all this start it was started. yeah, yeah. Uh, if it continues to stretch uh north and all these jobs start to come back and stuff like that i definitely think that it look in in January and February, everybody was talking about the economy is so strong because of Trump's economic policies that it's going to be very hard to beat him. And I think that uh, he can definitely get that back. If this trend continues, he can definitely get that part of it back. I don't think he's handling this protest stuff all that well, but I think the economic part, and that's what people vote on, by the way. It is like people vote on the economy. That that's the my that's my biggest people. factor, to be honest with you. Yeah. And I because I hear this all the time about you know. Obama was on the other day, right, for 15 minutes. And they were like, oh, God, I wish he was our president again. Look, he's a great orator, and I'm not going to take that away from him. However, <clears throat> financially, you know, eh, I, I, I like these policies better. Therefore, I'm going to go vote, vote for fucking Trump this fall. Well, look, like, as it's much, that simple. To yeah, me. as much as I, uh, and again, we, we, talk about, we talked about this during the interview, but as much as I rail on uh, white conservatives, that's because you're my people that's who i identify with that's i i i believe in conservative economic stuff mm -hmm. and and i'm white that's why i like try i'm <laughs> trying to take care of my own folks here and, and get messaging out i'm not like anti-white conservative that's what i am yeah so it's like uh i believe in that ideology and in, in, to a large degree um i think that the way that democrats handle the economy is fucking ludicrous it's not it's a it's a pipe dream it's like when, if you're sitting in a fucking business meeting and somebody's like, oh, yeah, that is a good idea that you just said. And then you start running numbers like, actually, this is fucked. Like, it seems like a good idea. But once you expose it a little bit, like, no, this, is, this can't work. Mm -hmm. the, usually what people will do, like, oh, yeah, it won't work. Let's try. Oh, let's just go with your thing. But not here. Here we're like, oh, no. Fuck you, man. We can't do that. That's, that's cruel. Yeah. It's not cruel, man. You're, you, I, the, the concept of trickle-down economics has been disproven. I don't think, I, I don't think that that's a thing. And, the, and the, con, the, the idea of it is kind of insulting. Like, we're, we're going to make a lot of money and whatever scraps fall off, that'll help you guys too, right? Yeah. Like just the, the idea of that is very insulting. To I think it's all people. psychological. It is, yeah. People are, they identify so mm -hmm. heavily with one, one side or the other. But ultimately, it's, it's, a, it's math. Like, conservative economic policies work better period it's not i don't think that's even up for debate anymore uh according to the left it is but i'm gonna read these jobs numbers here uh non-farm payroll rose two and a half million um after a plunge in 20.7 million in april and uh let's see which means we're here. about 10 to 12 percent back from where we were over the course of 
Correct. Uh, so the last what two weeks that things have opened that, back up. That's a good rate. That's the next. That's the next stat here is the labor department. Um, their their closely watched unemployment or their employment report on Friday also showed the jobless rate falling to thirteen point three percent from fourteen point yeah. seven in April. That is a post World War II high. Yeah, it is. So. And here I, I want to address another thing right quick. I was watching one of uh, somebody actually shared it with me. Uh, one of David Harris Jr.'s posts mm-hmm. this morning. And he was just kind of challenging. Like a lot of people, <laughs> what what uh, Mattis said the other day about how Trump is the most divisive president in history or in his lifetime or whatever the fuck. Look, man, Trump is an asshole and he doesn't have a filter. He says a lot of stupid shit that he shouldn't say that he, he should show a little bit more decorum. But he is a guy who has made his career, not just in politics, but as a businessman, eschewing the idea of political correctness and being polite, right? And, and and pushing his policy instead, which he believes works, and he's demonstrated they do work, at least economically. And no president has been better economically for black people in the history of this country than Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. I'm not a Donald Trump fan, but those are the fucking stats here, motherfucker. I mean, yeah. you gotta, if, if we're going to ask people again, I say this all the time, but if we're going to ask people to believe us when we talk, and I when I say us, I mean people who don't necessarily care for the way he talks, and then people who you know support him outright. Everybody, you have to admit when something is reality. This is reality. No president economically has ever been better for black people than Donald Trump, period. Yes. So that idea that he's the most divisive and he... That, or that, racist. That he's racist. Like, get fucked, It's man. crazy. I, Donald Trump is an angry, old, rich, white dude. So, yeah, he's probably going to say some shit that sounds racist sometimes. He's going to be... He, he lacks empathy to a large degree, but his performance economically mm-hmm. is not a matter of debate. I don't nope. think it is. His, how he handles the protest stuff and the, the strong language sometimes I think is problematic. But the economy stuff, you can't, you can't bring that up right yeah. now. And if, to be honest, if it continues to trend upward like this, what I said yesterday about <clears throat> him being in peril, losing the election, no way. Because maybe if they had a better – maybe if the Democrats had a better candidate than Joe Biden, it right. would be possible. But if the economy trends upward, I don't think the social unrest will matter at all. I, I don't either. And it's again, we're we're far enough away from the election that he'll have time to distance himself from what he did and didn't yeah. do. But it would be super nice if he did. Crisis. Things. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, but I, I, but I, Biden's been invisible. To, like, oh, he's so that he's in like a fucking cryo chamber. This should have been his they're gonna, moment. They're going to roll him on November 2nd. He's still going to have frost on his earlobes. <laughs> you know what I mean? That fucking dumb, dumb. Him and uh, Ted Williams and, I and think, Walt Disney's Here's head. the difference. I think that Joe Biden is genuinely racist. I think, I believe, I don't, I don't believe a lot of the Republican talking points on race relations and stuff and that, because some people believe that, uh, the idea of affirmative action is intrinsically racist because it presumes that these people can't help themselves, right? Mm-hmm. That's not true. It's just recognizing the gap. Like we started earlier than them because they had 400 year, we have a 400 year head start essentially is the premise. And I agree with that. That's just, that's a fact. But the idea that you have to, I, I think, I honestly think that these liberal people look down their nose like, oh, these poor black people, they yeah. just can't help themselves. No, all they want is a fucking shovel so they can dig some holes for themselves, man. They just want the tools to be able to do the shit. Right. Don't fucking patronize them. Like, the Democratic Party has been... Forget about all the KKK shit that they flip-flopped on in the 60s and finally started coming around yeah, yeah, on that. Yeah. Forget about all that shit. Just think about their economic policies and what they've, the effect they've had on the black community. These people don't care about the black community. No. I don't know if Donald Trump does or not, but he cares. He has a lot of his ego and pride is wrapped up and making sure he is the best economic president ever mm-hmm. because he sees himself as a businessman. I don't know about ever from my perspective, but he's doing a pretty goddamn good job economically. Yeah. Like you can't, if a guy's doing good shit for you, it's like the Drew Brees thing we talked about earlier. Maybe he's a little tone deaf, maybe. Yeah. But his actions don't tell the same story that his off color comments do. And I'm the same way. I say a lot of fucked up shit, I, I troll people unnecessarily all the time. Even if it's only me that knows it. Yeah. And I laugh at home to myself. <laughs> but if you need help, I will fucking help you all the time. I'm actually a super kind person, but I'd like to fuck with people so much and I don't care if you get offended. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. I understand that plight and I don't understand why um, we can't get our arms around that idea that just because he's cranky old, doesn't care about, you know, political decorum that he's somehow evil. Donald Trump is not evil. Right. 
He just wants to do his thing. And it's economically works. So far. So we'll see if this continues. I hope so. Because, I, look, I hope the best for America. I want mm-hmm. all my friends working. I want everybody to be rich and happy and whatever their dreams are, I want them to accomplish. Well, if you've got yeah. a list of goals that you want to accomplish, uh, you have to pick leaders that can best accomplish those goals. I don't think there's a president out there. Like, Obama couldn't do it. Mm-mm. Right? I don't, and, and George Bush was relatively kind and outspoken he's even recently yeah. about uh you know making sure that every american is taken care of but i don't think a president can accomplish that but a president can show leadership in the economy and make that happen mm-hmm. and i do think trump could do more with uh the stuff that's going on now but that that kind of falls on all of us i feel like and he's we it's easier to make a boogeyman and say well fucking racist trump tree and republicans did the same thing with obama they blamed obama for the fucking weather yeah. Sometimes, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was retarded back yeah. then. And it started with Bush. Everybody blamed, like, the phrase blame Bush. Yeah. I followed the hashtags blame Bush. Yeah. It was so and funny. Th- thanks, Obama. Obama. Yeah, and thanks, <laughs> Obama. It was the same stupid <laughs> shit. Uh, don't be one of those people. Don't be some asshole that just, that's the lowest common denominator stuff. Follow it to the root of the problem. Look, if you want things to get better for the black community, it starts with the way we think for sure. But it also heavily includes the fact that they have upward mobility and a strong economy for black people is, is part of that. Mm-hmm. And he's done it. Yeah. He's done it better than any, any president ever. No president has ever lowered the black unemployment rate like he has to that degree ever. 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 Like literally ever in, in the, the history, history of our country, country yeah. since Reconstruction mm-hmm. when they actually had rights. Like no one's ever done it this well. So maybe if you start giving people credit like, uh, <clears throat> there's this guy, and you know I'm not religious, but he's a, he, he, he works for Focus on the Family. His name's James Dobson, Dr. James Dobson. I think he actually worked in the Nixon administration back in the day or somebody, some Republican, maybe, maybe it was Reagan. Um, but he says in one of his books, the more frequently you catch your children doing the right thing, the less frequently you will catch them doing the wrong thing, right? And the idea is that positive reinforcement makes people feel good about themselves and makes them want to do more good. And I believe that. I believe people in America want to do more good. And Trump is a little bit petulant. So when you're, this this is to my friends on the left, when you're constantly berating the guy and calling him racist unjustly when he's done more for that community than pretty much any president ever, financially speaking, what, what is it that you're trying to accomplish? You know what I mean? Like you, he's building a house for you, and you don't like the way he's laying the bricks, so you come tear the house down and call him a racist. Yeah. No, dude, that's not how you handle that. That's just not, that's not the way life works. So it's really frustrating. I know I've been railing on conservatives the last couple of days, but that, to me, is, it's like shooting yourself in the head. Yeah, and look, man, uh, it's like Joe Biden says, you ain't black. <laughs> yeah. You're voting for uh, I don't know Trump. how any black person could ever support that guy after he said that I shit either. and i don't know how any woman could support him after he like <laughs> it's one thing to have accusations of sexual assault it's another thing to have years of creepy videos of you doing weird shit <laughs> but it's 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 a far worse thing to see the media and all these public officials and 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 celebrities that are that lean liberal come to his defense without seeing any of the evidence and completely dismiss this woman. It's nothing new. Hillary Clinton did it with all the people that Bill Clinton raped. Oh, yeah. It's nothing new. I'm just saying, as a, a, from the perspective of a female, if nobody that's on your side is taking your plight seriously, that, to me, I, like, how can you vote for that guy? I don't get it. I, I don't think you can, and, I don't, I, again, I don't think they'll show up uh, in the fall, too. So We'll see. Uh, if you're reading the polls, though, it would lead you to believe otherwise. Uh, before we get out of here, I have my own personal drinking bro of the day. Um, and it's it's the day we've been going every single day here at this point, and it's uh, Joshua Scoblin who wrote that article. Mm, actually, is that Marty's brother or some I shit? Think so. It, uh, do you know any other Scoblins? I don't. He wrote it for Coffee or Die um, dot com and uh, promo code Drinking Bros twenty at uh, BlackRifleCoffee dot com if you want to get some coffee inside your belly. But uh, Joshua wrote, wrote wrote this great article, and it, and it brought this to our attention, and uh, we were able to get Rugi on the show today to tell his story. But uh, keep doing great work, Joshua. Um, you're a fantastic writer, man. I, mm-hmm. I enjoyed this uh, piece. And they check out coffeeordie.com. It has to be Marty's brother. Marty is a or great his, fucking or writer. Or his cousin yeah. or something. Marty's a great fucking writer. Yeah, he so, is. Uh, Marty Scoville. 
But uh, thanks for tuning in, kids. We got a fun one tomorrow. We got uh, Kirill on the show mm. tomorrow, who's always fucking hilarious. Smoking weed in L.A., mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> talking shop. Uh, so tune in for that one. And uh, we're here Monday through Saturday um, with you on all of the fucking dials. We might have a surprise show, but it uh, might air before this, actually. Uh, Georgie, I'll mm. tell you about it here in a second. Um, we never know. We, we never know. And that's the beauty of it, man. We get calls out of nowhere, and it's just like, hey, I love the show. Can I be honest? Like, yeah, come on on, Come on in. For uh, Danthony Danthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.